Well, good morning, and welcome, welcome again to those of you who are joining us in person and those of you who are joining us online. We are so glad you joined us today. So confession time, confession time. I have a few quirks. Uh, one of my greatest quirks, and notice I call it a quirk and not, uh, not a pet peeve or an illness, <laughs> um, I, I like everything to be in order. I, I think that everything has a place. And uh, like, for instance, when I, when I write, before I write in my office, I need to make sure that I've got a nice, clear space, pens are put away, things are put away, things are aligned, right? And then, and then I write. Um, I can tell right away when someone has moved something in my office or something in the living room, for instance. Uh, we had a housekeeper come in um, years and years ago, and she would dust and she would pick up things and put them in a different spot. It would drive me batty because I, I, I don't know if she was trying to prove that she was dusting so she'd move things around, or but I could tell and it would just drive me nuts that things did not go back where they were supposed to be because everything, everything has a place, everything in its place. As many of you know, I am married to a wonderful man, uh, and God, in, in God's infinite wisdom, um, tends to put people that are opposites together, right? Uh, and so as much as I believe that everything has a place, I am married to a man who believes that one shouldn't limit a thing to one particular spot. Uh, there are many, many potential places for something. And so on a regular basis, Brian and I end up in a, uh, an incredibly intense fellowship, shall we say, as we discuss yet again where in many of the potential places his watch or his keys might be. And I inevitably end up saying, if you just put your stuff in the spot where it belongs, we wouldn't have to go through this time and time again. Now, let me say that as a minister, and particularly uh, maybe even more so as a wife, there is nothing more satisfying than when God actually agrees with me. <laughs> you know, when you go to the Word of God, and God and you are on the same page, uh, it's awesome. So today, we're going to look at 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12. And you're, I'm going to show you where the Apostle Paul and I are in full agreement under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that God essentially said there is a place for everything and everything in its place. But before we turn to the scripture, would you join me in prayer? Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts bring glory and honor to you, O Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Okay, so here is the word of God. 1 Corinthians 12, beginning at verse 12. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? Now this is where God and I are in agreement. Verse 18, but in fact, God has placed, just stop there and notice the word placed. God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I do not need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. 
and the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor, and the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. Just tuck that away in your mind. Verse 24, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. I love this text. Uh, and I really never appreciated verse 26 that reads, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it, until I had my hammock incident. Now, I'm sure I have told you this story before. Uh, Brian and I were up at the cottage. We have a two-person hammock. It was attached by two two hooks on, on between two trees. And Ryan and I at that time weren't lying on it. We were actually sitting on it facing the lake. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun to see if we could just swing on this thing, right? So I'm kicking off with my feet and we're just swinging. And Brian said, Mona, stop. And I said, no, this is so fun. <laughs> Look at me, it's a little swing. Mona, stop. And, he, and so then he put his leg on top of my legs to stop me from kicking off. And sure enough, as he suspected, the hooks gave way and poof, we went right down. And the weight of his legs and on, on top of the fall and I landed right on the root of a tree. Um, so so I, I, I was hurting. <laughs> I was in some pain. At first, um, you know, we had a friend of ours come up that weekend or something. And he's a chiropractor. He says, oh, wow, it's probably a pulled hamstring. And I thought, how cool, you know, because that's kind of like a sporting injury, <laughs> right? <laughs> pulled hamstring. But it got worse over time. And so I had to get an x-ray done. And it, we discovered that it was a herniated disc. I could barely walk. I couldn't sit comfortably. It rendered me useless for days, and I was in pain for months. Now, a herniated disc occurs when one of the rubbery cushions, that's the disc, between the individual bones that make up the spine, the vertebrae, that stack together to make up the spine, the little disc pushes through the crack into the tougher exterior. And I was in so much pain because of a rubbery cushion, a tiny little thing. I didn't even know it was there. I mean, nobody ever saw it, right? It was tucked away, and in a flash, that tiny little thing became displaced. Here's the thing. The church is full of rubbery discs. <laughs> Scripture tells us in verse 21 that those parts of the body that seem weaker and indi are, are, are indispensable. There's a whole lot of unseen parts. And sometimes we think that, you know, it's only the ones that are up on the platform, right? The one who's talking and the one singing, and they're the important parts of the body. But the fact of the matter is the part that I thought was not important had the capacity to immobilize me and to make me not able to do the things I could do before. A, a part smaller than the tip of my finger. So every time you think, well, it doesn't matter if I go to church, no one's going to miss me, I'm wearing a mask, no one's going to know me, or my tithe is so incidental, it doesn't matter if I put it in the offering you know, basket at the back, who's going to notice? Or, or why would anyone notice if I serve in kids zone, they go downstairs, nobody actually sees, it doesn't matter, right? Or if I help at the door, or if I help with coffee time, what does it matter? Please hear me when I tell you that it matters. Everything matters. It all matters. Scripture tells us that God sets every member in place. 
my rubbery disc came out of place. The, that one little disc out of place affected the whole body. And we read that the body of Christ, if, if we, if we, the body of Christ, would understand the power and the magnitude of this, we would never devalue every phone call we're prompted to make to give somebody some encouragement or perhaps to, to take a meal over to somebody in the church who's had a, a, a problem or a sickness or an illness. We end up devaluing discs that God has set in place simply because they're not prominent, right? Simply because they're not acknowledged or applauded or recognized. And God says, how dare you diminish my body? I have set you in place. Every sinew, every muscle, every ligament, every disc. And they're important to God. They're all important to God. They're important enough that the creator of the universe would choose to create them and put them in place. And yet, we devalue them because, you know, it's not sensational, it's not celebrity, it's not cool. And God says, could you imagine, just imagine, the potential of Amber Lee Church if every one of us embraced our place? Can you imagine what, what this church could do in this community, in this world, if we all embraced our place. Can you imagine? God has planted you in his house. You're in the house of God. You're in the house. <laughs> Scripture tells us in Psalm 92 that those who are planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish. Not those who every now and again bless the house with their presence, you know, in, in, in those who are planted and rooted are deep, who have embraced their place, who say, I am here. We are told that our lives then will flourish. We're doing something pretty amazing here at Amberley. But we could, we, if we could look through the spirit, right? We're only just scratching the surface compared to the potential to be running and soaring simply because so many members have devalued the place in which God has set them and think that it doesn't matter. And God says, do you realize how much you are crippling and immobilizing the body? For weeks, I was hobbling around in pain. I felt, I felt pain radiating down my left leg, and I couldn't, I couldn't put any weight on it. I couldn't stretch it out properly. And, and if we could picture the church, because what happens is one part of the body has to compensate for the other part of the body, right? And that's what happened to me. I had a herniated disc that affected my left leg, and so my right leg, in fact, my whole right side had to compensate. It affected how I walked, how I sat, how I moved. Other parts of the body felt the strain of this one herniated disc. And we, and we think that we're soaring here, right? And the truth is that some people, honestly, some people are carrying a lot of the load. What ends up happening is that half the body ends up burnt out and tired and weary. And they're not maybe because they're doing, doing uh, much more, but they're, they're actually, ha what's happening is that they're carrying, they're carrying a load that the other part of the body isn't carrying. And so they're giving more than they should, and they are serving more than they should because they're trying to carry for the rest of the body. If we simply embraced our place, if we all just embrace the place that God had for us, we would all flourish. Nobody would get burnt out. No one would be falling apart. Everybody would be flourishing. The body itself would have that momentum and such strength that the gates of hell would not prevail against the church of the living God. And that's where you go, amen. Right? <laughs> 
And we would continue to move forward if we just understood, if we just understood that God has set us in place. Just imagine if we all simply embrace the place that God had for us. If we were to understand that there is grace for the place that we're in. And that grace comes with enablement and it comes a flour- there comes a flourishing and there comes, there comes prosperity relationally, emotionally, physically, financially. So many of the stresses that we encounter in life is because we haven't embraced the place that we've been placed. But what if we did? What if we trusted God, that God has put us exactly where God wants us to be? How would that change your mindset? I don't know what place you're in right now. Maybe you've got, you know, those of you who are watching, maybe you have small kids at home. And, and everything in you wants to just <laughs> bolt. <laughs> you, want, you want to excel at something else. But God says, you're in a place where you need to be right now. Or you could be working in a job and you're just not feeling satisfied and you know that there's so much more potential inside of you. But God says, I've got you in a place. And in that place, God is preparing you for the thing that he has already prepared you for. God is actually doing something within you so that he can do something through you. You might be serving in an area of ministry and your heart, in your heart you're thinking, oh, there's something better than this. And you think, I'm wasting my time here. I want something awesome. Back in the day when I was serving as the youth and children's director in a, in a church uh, in, in North Toronto, um, there were six kids in my youth group. God was preparing me, even then, for this place. But if I never embraced that place, I would never be standing in this place today. Don't devalue the place that God has put you in. Don't devalue it. And and here's the thing. If you don't embrace it, you're never going to be in a position to go to the next place. For so many of us, when we're herniated, when we're displaced, when we've displaced ourselves, we're chasing a position we want rather than embracing the place that God has. And here's the thing I think we forget. I think we forget that if God assigned you, God will find you. When Samuel, the prophet, came to anoint the next king, Jesse paraded his sons out in front of him. And Samuel said, no, the Lord has not chosen any of them. Do you have another? And Jesse says, oh, yeah, I have a kid who's out shepherding his, the sheep out in the, out in the fields. David was in the place, in the backside of the desert, looking after sheep. God had assigned him, and God knew where to find him. If God planted you, stay in place. God will find you for the next thing. Before COVID, uh, when people actually went to conferences in person, I know we're starting to do that again, but I was, uh, I was asked to lead a preaching workshop at, uh, uh, at the University of Toronto. It was a preaching conference at the University of Toronto. And first, let me tell you that when I got the call, I said, I think you have the wrong number. <laughs> you might be looking for somebody else. And they said, no, no. They assured me that they had called the right person. And the keynote speaker for this event was world-renowned preacher by the name of Tom Long. And you might not know who that is, but I've got all his books in my office. And, and so here I was, right, uh, on the same advertising bill as the gr- one of the greatest preachers, one that I look up to, and I'm on, I'm on the same advertising bill as him. I was a wreck just thinking about it. Just, I, I, I was stymied by this whole thing. And then I realized I didn't go seeking this. I, I didn't put myself out there. I didn't go seeking this. God put me there. And I don't have to be anyone else. I just need to be me. All I have to do is embrace the place that God has placed me. And you know what? It took the stress out of everything. I actually had fun. 
And maybe some of you are feeling that inner frustration because you haven't embraced your place. You're looking everywhere else thinking, God, what are you going to do? When are you going to open that door? And here's the thing. If we simply step into the place God has opened us up for right now, the place right now, you will be stunned five years, maybe even six months from now, where God will take you. You will be astonished. Jesus in Gethsemane had to embrace a place he, he did not want to, right? In order for him to, to, to do what he ultimately wanted. He went to the cross for the joy set before him. What did he do? He endured. He was in Gethsemane. In Gethsemane is a hard place to be. He said, Father, if there's any other way, would you take this cup from me? Let me give you a version that that we might relate to. God, I don't want to do this. God, I don't want to keep fighting for this marriage. God, I'm tired of looking after these kids. God, I don't want to stay in this job and submit to that boss who's a lunatic. God, I don't want to keep serving in this ministry. And the culture that you and I are are in, it's like, well, if you don't want to do it, if you don't like it, leave. If you don't like your marriage, not satisfying you, leave. You don't like the people, say, looked at you the wrong way, cancel. What if we, the body of Christ, would choose to model to the world that I'm going to stay in place? Yes, it's tough. I don't necessarily want to do this, but nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And the truth is, for so many of us, so many of us aren't faithful with what God has placed in our hand right now. And we need to embrace the place right now before God so that he can bless us to where we want to go. Did you know that next year, Amber Lee will be celebrating its 40th anniversary of existence? Isn't that amazing? 40 years, yeah. That is a long time to have an impact on this community. And I believe we have only just begun. 40 years young, not 40 years old. And there's so much that we can do still. I believe that the potential of this church has to further the impact in this community. It is huge, huge. But in order for that to happen, every part of the body, especially those irreplaceable, unseen parts, the little discs, the ligaments, the muscles, we need to embrace, we need to embrace the place that we are right now, and trust God with the results. And then watch and see what God will do in and through us. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this holy, anointed, unbelievable house that you've raised up in this community. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that every single person would embrace their place. No one would think that they are too insignificant, that their gift is too minimal, that they're not enough of anything, but they would know that in you they are enough. You are enough, and you've thought enough of them that you have set them in place. Father, may we all be people that embrace our place in your body, in your house, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.